Okay. Hello, everyone. Our uh, product is called the Dirty Room Notifier. Next, please. Next. Oh yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, so yeah, the main uh, idea for the main goal for this project is to use image segmentation to determine whether a room is clean or dirty. Sorry. Next. Sorry. Sorry. Um, the motivation for this um, for this project is uh, to help out um, Airbnb owners. Um, sorry, the previous slide. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, to uh, help out Airbnb owners uh, because there's a surprisingly high number of uh, cases where people go into an Airbnb, uh, um, they rent an Airbnb and they find garbage in the room. And this is a mistake by the cleaning staff and they uh, and this causes the owner to get bad reviews. So that's the motivation for the project. Next, please. Thank you, Gonzalo. So we started gathering data in two different levels, clean and not clean. So we took a picture of a clean room and then added manually some garbage in the room and said, uh, took different pictures. Uh, so in total, 10, 10 different angles and in total four 450 pictures, which you can see the uh, data split. But we thought, and it did, it wasn't sufficient data because we always uh, put the put the clean reference of the room along with the non-clean one and then put it to the neural net. Uh, and that's, that, that's why it was a sufficient data. Next, please. Um, so we started uh, the data processing by first uh, having the 200 by uh, 200 pixels squared picture, and then we manually created masks for each of the garbage in the room. So we drew the uh, garbage of each of the room, as you can see in the mask uh, section down there. Um, and then we had data augmentation by changing the brightness of the of the uh, each room, which gave us 18 pictures out of just one image. Next, please. So our baseline model was CNN and MLP. Well, we had uh, the two, two common rotational layers and one fully connected layer, and that would give us just the binary output of either that, that room is clean or not clean. Next, please. And as you can see, the baseline model, uh, it's pretty clear that did a very good job. The test accuracy was 0 0.96 and the test loss was 0 0.06. Next. Of course, we weren't satisfied with a simple binary classification. We wanted to uh, go in depth and uh, actually find where the garbage was located in the room. So we resorted to the UNET, which is an architecture that's designed for image segmentation. And what we did is we passed in a six channel image as Mobin described, which is a reference picture and the input picture and passed it through a series of downscaling convolutions and upscaling convolutions to, uh, get, to obtain an output like this grayscale picture on the right. Next, please. Uh, so here we can see the full process of the model. There were there's two main parts. The one I just described, where we send in uh, the reference picture and the input picture through the unit, obtain the grayscale output. Then that grayscale output is passed through a pixel decision function, where, where every pixel is uh, classified as clean or dirty, and that's how the mask, a predicted mask, is generated, which is compared to the true mask, and then that's how the model is optimized. Then uh, the last part is where we look at the predict predicted mask and uh, we determine whether there is garbage or not or and whether we should notify the uh, owner of the house or not. Next, please. So here we can see the quantitative results for the final part where we determine whether a room is finally clean or finally dirty. So from this uh, confusion matrix, we can see that the accuracy was 80%, not as good as uh, the baseline model, but we have the extra functionality of, uh, of um, the image segmentation. But we can also see that there is a, a significant number of uh, images that were uh, dirty, but they were classified as clean. And we don't like these false negatives. So we really wanted to optimize the recall. So, um, and also we realized that this confusion matrix doesn't really tell us much about the image segmentation. So we have to resort to other metrics for that. Next, please. Awesome. Um, yeah, so as far as segmentation results, um, we managed to overfit very well to a single angle. So a single um, room. And we also managed to get very high results or very good results uh, on our entire data set on both our training as well as our validation uh, data set. Um, however, we noticed that we never managed to get perfectly pixel perfect accurate results for any of our results. Um, but the test results is really where the variability uh, in our output started to show itself. So whenever we ev evaluated our model on data that was similar um, in lighting conditions or similar in the types of items um, to our training data, that's when we got good results. But on any sort of brand new data and any sort of um, completely novel angles, that's really where our model um, started to fail to generalize. And we spe specifically noticed um, it had trouble on low contrast items. 
Uh, next, please. Uh, now we also needed a quantitative way of measuring the performance of our segmentation. Uh, so we used the dice coefficient, uh, which is essentially uh, the ratio of the intersecting pixels between the two images over the total number of pixels. Um, next, please. Um, so as far as the actual quantitative results, um, we managed to get very, very good results um, on our training data set. We managed to get down to a training of 0 0.0722 um, and a training dice of 0 0.9871 and similar results for our validation data set. Uh, but then again, on our test data set, we managed to get dice coefficients that ranged between 0 0.8531 and 0.456. So this is really where that variability uh, started to come into play. Uh, next, please. Um, so in order to improve um, how our model generalizes in the future, we've laid out certain, certain steps we want to improve. Um, so one of these would be to pre-train on synthetic data. So for example, simply creating synthetic images and, and applying dirt manually. Um, another thing would be to automate the labeling process. Creating the data was one of the most uh, time consuming and challenging parts of this uh, project. Um, so simply feeding our data through the UNET beforehand would be an improvement. And the other thing would be to train with slight changes in position or furniture. So this would further increase robustness. Uh, and the last improvement we thought of was changing to an RCNN based model, uh, which might improve the, uh, the spatial accuracy of our model. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, I've lost your uh, lost your presentation. That's, <laughs> where did it go? Let's see. That was a. There we go. There it is. Um, a little over time there. Uh, interesting, interesting work. You've chosen a challenging problem, and some of that's coming through in all the different things you tried to do. Uh, uh, it's great to see that you collected your own data. That is hard work. So you went and took pictures of your own, we're looking at your own homes here and all the messes you've created. Uh, my first question is um, about this split in training versus validation versus testing. How unique were the test sets with respect to uh, rooms? Were, were, were they different rooms? Right, so we actually tried several different test sets. So the test that you're seeing, the 15% there, is based on the original set of photos we collected. So that's where we got the actual quite decent results. But we trained uh, so it and taken completely to, new photos. Uh, you need to actually respond directly to the question. So, so. Uh... Um, I, I, I guess I'm trying to say we had, we had multiple sets of test results. So one that was, like you're saying, part of the original data set and one that, ones that weren't. I see. So that's that's actually quite confusing to present results with a widely varying uh, training, validation, and test sets. So I would uh, I would uh, advise against that because that's you know that's not the rules of the game. The rules of the game are: Did you learn? We we give you an exam, and we don't show you what was on the uh, exam beforehand. And uh, that's the same thing here. So um, uh, also your base. Uh, it, I. Okay, so that kind of confuses things. So uh, you had to do a complex thing when you got to the actual segmentation part where you're trying to classify every pixel, but your baseline didn't do that, right? Your baseline simply said, is it messy or not? And so, so you broke another rule there, which is, you know, your baseline should be trying to do what your actual network is trying to do. So uh, I think you're gonna have to find a way to describe that or fess up to that, frankly, in your final uh, report, because again, that's not, you know, so, that's, so, that's not the point of a baseline, right? Baseline is supposed to be the thing that right. you're doing. So. So, so our unit does actually does do the binary predictions. So we thought of the segmentation as just an extra thing, right? Our, our unit does does give you a binary prediction. Um, just passes, It just counts the total number of dirty pixels and passes those to the thre threshold. So um, it, so it, do it does a, do, it does. So, so do you up. have a head-to-head -head comparison of that in the, on one of these slides? Baseline um, prediction versus yeah. baseline the other one? Yeah, so it's the uh, binary clean uh, dirt. It's slide number nine. Uh, where I don't see any slide. Uh, that's oh, uh, it's the um, uh, quantitative results. Uh, yeah, just that. Yeah, that one. So we're so the test accuracy of eighty percent is the versus the ninety nine point six percent or 96% on the baseline? Right, so we did achieve a lower uh, lower result on our unit versus our baseline. But you're- The binary task. 
Yeah, yeah. But the network's busy trying to do something else, actually. It's not trying to do binary classification. So again, that's not an right. apples to apples kind of thing. So um, it's great that you got experience in UNET, by the way. It's a pretty interesting thing. And so now widely used for all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, so that's that's good experience. Um, you know, we all of this apples to apples request that I'm making is really a fundamental science and it takes some getting used to. Uh, so maybe maybe think about that in your in your final report. Uh, see if you can get closer to that. Um, if I can add something to that. Sure. Yeah, um, at the same time, we were trying to work on a on another baseline model, which like you said, was is a little more comparable. We were trying to use a, an encoder decoder. Uh, no, yeah, uh, to uh, using like a, a convolutional, um, yeah, like a convolutional encoder and then decoder to produce another mask. So that was something that we were trying to do, but we didn't get really good results for that. So we, um, yeah, that's something that we didn't add into this presentation. So it's kind of, kind of like an auto encoder, except you're training against the output mask. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Um, uh, that, yeah, well, it's great that you tried this. It sounds like you learned all kinds of things. Uh, um, okay, uh, Imtihan, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, so what I can see from your presentation is you guys had kind of a feature creep going on. At the beginning, you were talking about just essentially doing binary classification on images, and then you put in the segmentation in there. But what I don't see is what's the value you're getting out of the segmentation. Hmm. So whenever you do something, it's important to understand what what you're getting out of it and that's a good question it, do, you, do you have an answer to that question you know what, what, why did you go to... yes like, yeah. Uh, yeah the idea is that we can by by having the information of where the, the garbage is actually located on future we can like uh, um, like the technology can build on top of that or uh, it can basically build a robot that would take that garbage out or we can realize that where where are the um, basically, or how how much of a mess is this room? So this is the things that would it could uh, basically be on top of this. Um, but at the end of the day, um, we we wanted to do something feasible in in the in the, our like something feasible in this project, and we thought that just a binary classification would be feasible enough. Oh, so do. so you've given the answer. That's a good an That's sort of a good answer. You you don't need to go on to the second part of what you're saying. It's a good answer. You have this big vision of uh, where it could go, uh, but that vision has to be all in the front. So, so when you when you pitch a company or pitch something to your boss that you want to get uh, licensed to do something, uh, you you have to include all of that at the beginning, or else throw it out. You you have to create some engineering scientific focus, and so so uh, Imtihan called it feature creep, and I, and I think he's he's right. Uh, and, and learning to get that focus. Well, the way you learn to get that focus is you come up with all your ideas, you start spewing them, and somebody tells you that's too much. It's got to be clear. And so I just did that, and so did Inti on it. So, uh, but the, uh, that's not to say that vision that goes all those other places isn't a nice and wonderful thing. That's your inner e Elon Musk. It's all good. Uh, but but uh, even Elon Musk, when he said when he was told, uh, I have this story from uh, indirectly when he told the venture capitalists that he wanted to go to Mars. Uh, they said, well, maybe could you get a satellite up first? <laughs> and, so, uh, and so I think that's where SpaceX started, by the way. So um, I heard, uh, that's a true anecdote, by the way. Okay, uh, anything else? Uh, mm, yeah, the, my, my second point kind of relates to the first. Uh, if you are like focused on the classification, your baseline gets a 96% and your second model uh, gets far lower than that. So yeah. You you talk about the segmentation uh, and and like but you, but you don't uh, give a good argument for why that's valuable. Yeah, no, uh, especially yeah. when you compare to the classification accuracy going down so much, right? So hey, it hey. relates back. Sorry, that's a repeat of the same point though, right? Imtihan? Yeah. Okay, we better move on because we're uh, we're uh, uh, just at the time boundary. So let's go.